All right, welcome back. Treadwell DPT, anatomy breakdown, muscle by muscle. Today we're tackling the rhomboids, major and minor. Deep scapular stabilizers, essential for healthy shoulder mechanics, posture, and overall upper back function, a T-spine. Whether you're a student, clinician, trainer, athlete, bodybuilder, being familiar with these muscles is pretty important for understanding scapular mobility and diagnosing potential dysfunction. Let's dive in and we'll really break them down. So first, where are they, right? Rhomboids sit deep to the trapezius in the upper back that run from your spine to that medial scapular border. Minor is that little one up top and then major is the big boy right below it. When you go to palpate the two, you're going through the trapezius. So you probably won't be able to detect too much detail. Not easy or even very likely that you'd be able to differentiate those fibers when you're palpating, but you can feel the tension of that contraction when someone squeezes their shoulder blades together. That's a good cue. Our rhomboid minor originates from the spinous processes of C7 and T1 as well as the portion of the nuchal ligament near those segments. Then we'll insert along that medial border of the scapula at the level of the scapular spine. So all in all about the width of one segment. Now our rhomboid major is essentially the same shape, same length, but about three times the width. It arises from the spinous processes of T2 through T5 and then again, it starts along that medial border of the scapula, this time starting right under the insertion of rhomboid minor. So traveling from just below that T-spine or spinous scapula rather, and then traveling down to that inferior angle. Together, these muscles create like a layered continuous band of fibers that connects the upper T-spine to the scapula. And that allows coordinated scapular retraction increased stability as well as increased control of the scapula so pretty cool actually just to reiterate we've got rhomboid minor originating on the spinous process of c7 and t1 and then inserting to the level of the spine of the scapula on the medial border rhomboid major originates from t2 through t5 inserts just below that rhomboid minor along the length of that medial border of the scapula. Both rhomboids work together to retract the scapula, pulling it towards the spine. They also help with downward rotation and play a role in elevation of the scapula. Clinically, they're big players in posture correction. When we do our posture corrects or that scap retracts move in PT, we're getting a lot of rhomboid involvement. Thinking about people with those rounded forward shoulders, they'd often benefit from just doing that opposite movement, activating those rhomboids. We spoke about how the rhomboids work synergistically with teres major in that last video. They sort of brace the scapula as teres major extends the humerus has a similar pattern with a lot of the muscles back there actually, not only teres major, but the lats and posterior delt as well. These are big muscles, big movers, so very important to keep that balance. But also, as you'd imagine, not the easiest. Also a little bit of a balancing act with the pec minor on the other side in regards to maintaining that downward rotation. You're much more likely to see guys hitting the lats posterior delt and the pecs, of course, in the gym, as opposed to rhomboids or middle traps. So not abnormal to see those imbalances. Very, very big posture muscle for sure.
Both muscles are innervated by our dorsal scapular nerve. Our primary nerve root is just gonna be C5. Most commonly seen pattern is that nerve being derived from the ventral branch of C5. There is a possibility of C4 involvement, but not nearly as common as just the pure C5. Dorsal scapular nerve also innervates the levator scapulae muscle, so you do see a little coordination there, as well as some other similarities between those two muscles. But again, just to reiterate, the rhomboids are innervated by the dorsal scapular nerve, with the primary nerve root being C5. Our rhomboids really matter a ton, and that's in both the rehab and the gym phases of our fitness. Clinically, the rhomboid major and minor are essential for maintaining proper scapular positioning, as well as that dynamic stability of the shoulder girdle when we're doing our overhead movements. Weakness or poor motor control of these muscles often contributes to postural dysfunction, such as scapular contraction and forward shoulder posture, which we mentioned. Commonly seen in patients with what we'd call upper cross syndrome. So when we see those big bodybuilder muscle groups, our pecs, our upper traps, they've been overworked, and those less sexy muscles, the rhomboids, mid to lower traps, deep cervical flexors, aren't getting any work. We end up with that cross of tight overworked muscles versus weak stretched out muscles. And you do see the, the postural abnormality related to that, as well as sometimes pain and discomfort. This dysfunction can lead to altered scapular mechanics during the overhead movements, increasing the risk for impingement syndromes, as well as just any other rotator cuff pathology. Also could see like a pseudo scapular winging, not necessarily to that level of dysfunction, but you will see that medial border rise up a bit away from the rib cage. Rehab typically focuses on restoring control, the scapular traction, and improving endurance rather than just the maximal strength. We use exercises like the ITYs, the scapular rows, band pull-aparts, emphasis on precise movement, very precise muscle endurance type movements. I do a good amount of rhomboid stuff for all types of shoulder patients very beneficial for maximizing that scapular stability and with the rotator cuff originating on the scapula we definitely do need that stability a good understanding of rhomboid function will definitely help when it comes to designing effective treatments workout plans that will improve your posture that will reduce the pain and also just give you an overall improvement in shoulder mechanics so very very important muscle to be working in your gym and in your rehab phase of fitness. All right, good deal. That's our breakdown on rhomboids, major and minor. Simple muscles with a big role in shoulder health, posture, and stability. Next up, we've got a muscle that we mentioned shares a few similarities with our rhomboids. We've got levator scapulae. We're wrapping up our scapular muscles here soon, so this should make for a collection of pretty good, cool resources. If you enjoy the breakdown, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. More to come. Don't want to miss it. Little DBT. Catch you later.